The Merry Jests of Hugh Ambrose. Number 7,863, The Poor Witch and the Rich Counselor. A certain poor witch did meet a well-fed counselor. Merry fool, quoth the counselor, quither away. In truth, said the poor wag, in that I have eaten naught these two days, I do wither away, and that right rapidly. The counselor laughed hugely, ha, 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 and gave him a sausage, <laughs> and gave him a sausage, and gave him a sausage. Ah, tis but melancholy mumming when poor, heartbroken, jilted Jack Point must needs turn to Hugh Ambrose for original light humor. Ah, oh, Master Point. <gasps> Friend Jailer, Jailer that wast, Jailer that never shall be more. Jailer that jailed not, or that jailed if jail he did so unjailerly that twas but jerry jailering, or jailering in joke. <laughs> Though no joke to him who by unjailer like jailering did so jeopardize his jailership. Come, take heart, smile, laugh, wink, twinkle, thou tormentor that tormentest none, thou racker that rackest not, thou pincher out of place. Come, take heart and be merry as I am, as I am. Ah, oh, it's well for thee to laugh. Thou hast a good post, and hast cause to be merry. <laughs> cause! Have we not all cause? Is not the world a big butt of humor into which all who will may drive a gimlet? See, I am a salaried wit. And is the rot in nature more ridiculous? A poor, dull, heartbroken man who must needs be merry, or he will be whipped. Who must rejoice, lest he starve. Who must jest you, jive you, quip you, crank you, rack you, riddle you. From hour to hour, from day to day, from year to year, must he dwindle, perish, starve, pine, and die. Why, when there's naught else to laugh at, I laugh at myself till I ache for it. Yet I have often thought that a jester's calling would suit me to a hair. <laughs> thee! What suit thee, thou death's head and crossbones? I, I have a pretty wit, a light, airy, joysome wit, spiced with anecdotes of prison cells and the torture chamber. I've tried it on many prisoners, and there have been some who smiled. <laughs> now, it's not easy to make a prisoner smile. No. And it should not be difficult to be a good jester, seeing as thou art one. Difficult, but nothing easier. Nothing easier. A ten, and I shall prove it to thee. <laughs> Oh, a private buffoon is a light-hearted loon if you listen to popular rumor. From the morn to the night he's so joyous and bright and he bubbles with wit and good humor. He's acquainted to a terse but then prose and adverse yet to the people forgive his transgression. There are one or two rules that all family fools must observe that they love the profession. There are one or two rules, half a dozen maybe, that all family fools of whatever degree must observe that they love the profession. If you wish to succeed as a jester, you'll need to consider each person's auricular. What is all right for B would quite scandalize C, for C is so very particular. And D may be dull and E's very thick skull is as empty and brains as a ladle. While F is F sharp and will try with a carp that he's known your best joke from his cradle. When you're home with a flat like can't the top go and it does put you out when a person says, oh, I have no metal joke from my cradle. If your master is surly from getting up early and tempers are short in the morning, an inopportune joke is enough to provoke him to give you at once a month's warning. And then if you refrain, he is at you again, for he likes to get value for money. He'll ask then and there, with an insolent stare, if you know that you're paid to be funny. It answers the task of a many men's place when your principal asks the scowl on his face. If you know that you're paid to be funny, Comes a bishop, maybe, or a solemn DD, or beware of his anger provoking. Better not pull his hand off the kings in his chair, he don't understand practical joking. If the jest that you crack have an orthodox knack, you may get a bland smile from these sages. But should they by chance be imported from France, half a crown is dropped out of your wages. It's a general rule of New Zealand to make quench. If the family fool has a joke that's too French, half a crown is dropped out of your wages. 
Until your head is made rack with the biggest attack and your senses with two that you're losing. Don't be mopey and flat, they don't find you for that if you're properly quaint and amusing. Though your wife ran away with a soldier that day and took with her your trifle of money. Bless your heart, they don't mind. They're exceedingly kind. They don't blame you as long as you're funny. It's a comfort to feel if your partner should fit there. You suffer a deal, they don't mind it a bit. They don't blame you so long as you're funny. So thou wouldst be a jester, eh? Aye. 